thank you once again for staying with a morning live. Now, the life Esidimeni arbitration uh, led by former Deputy Chief Justice Tihang Museneke was intended to bring about justice for the families. And according to the committee representing families, only 134 payments have been granted out of 1,400 claimants. And at this point, no one is being held accountable for the tragedy. And with us now, uh, Gauteng Health spokesman, uh, Spokesperson Tabo Masebe and Christine Ngumalo for the Esidimeni Family Committee uh, talking on behalf of the families. Thanks so much to both of you for coming through. Thanks Thank for you. Having us. Okay, let's start here. Um, the fact that only 134 play, uh, claimants have been paid to date. Uh, is there a problem? If so, why? Start with you, Mr. Masebe. Okay, let me just explain something. Uh, Justice Musaneke ordered government to pay 134 claimants. That order has been fully complied with. So 134 were paid according to the lists that uh, were provided by Justice Musaneke. Uh, so that was done, 100%. Then um, during the proceedings, the arbitration proceedings, not all the families, the affected families, were part of the proceedings. And Justice Musaneke himself did actually say that he expects that uh, more people may now start coming forward to make their claim. So these are the new claims that have now uh, been made. Um, I think it is important to separate, although they, in the end, all of them are affected families. So the part that was dealt with by uh, the arbitration process that was led by Justice Musaneke resulted with 134 uh, claims uh, being made and paid out by government. New claims, we're sitting at about 300 uh, people who have now approached the government with their claims and those are being processed. Uh, we'll be able to give the full number of how many have been pay paid in the new claims as we move along, but we are now uh, processing those ones with the assistance of the Office of the Master of the High Court. Talk to us about that verification process. What does it entail? The verification process simply helps us to establish uh, the relationship between the person who is making the claim and the mental health care user on whose behalf the claim is being made. So we need to establish that relationship uh, and actually the, 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 yeah, how they are related. And once that is established, uh, we can then uh, ascertain if this is the rightful claimant. Uh, in line with uh, uh, the families, uh, how uh, uh, families uh, uh, relate. So that is being done. Uh, and once that is done, we then process the payments. Um, but as I said, we're working very closely with uh, the master of the high court to conduct that verification. Christine, as a representative of the families who are affected uh, by this tragedy, are you satisfied with uh, the process thus far and the speed at which it's moving? Um, so, you know, before I answer your question, can I just, um, I think the way Tabo explains the 134 versus the 1,400 confuses a lot of people because people give them, it, it gives the impression that the award was complied with. And yet Moseneke's award says that everybody, both deceased and survivors, who were moved during that period must be compensated. So the 134 that he's referring to just happened to be the ones who were aware that this was happening and were at the arbitration. But everyone else who was coming to claim forms part of the 1,400. And because a lot of families are still under the impression only the, the bereaved families um, are supposed to come forward. So that's why the numbers are trickling in. Um, if we are happy about the process, it's very slow. It's very slow because families have been trying to claim for a very long time. Initially, the verification process was, was families could call in and check if the name of the loved one was part of the process, was on the list. 
that process didn't happen so well. And there were delays and there were dates given when families must be paid. That didn't happen. Um, but the biggest issues that family w um, had was that they wanted to be to claim exactly the same way as those who claimed um, during the arbitration. But there were issues there. And that was part of the reason why there was a delay. So as it stands right now, um, there has been concern, of course, about the relationship, the working relationship between uh, government and uh, the affected families. How would you characterize that relationship right now? Look, we, as we represent families, and that's, that's really the bottom line. Um, we may have conversations with the Premier's office, but the Premier's office is not the Department of Health. So the issues still remain with the Department of Health and what they are doing and what they're not doing. There's a lot of things that we haven't received any feedback on as a family because the claim is only but one part of the whole process. What are your other concerns? Our concerns are the, 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 the contracts um, with these facilities, um, you know, where, where patients have been moved back to. We're still having the same issues we had prior to them being at closing. So we're not very happy with that. The recovery plan has not been finalized. Uh, we still have to do work on the monument as well. So there's a lot of things that are still outstanding that are not getting the attention. And you say this is as a result of the department not yes, doing its job? Yes, unfortunately the health, uh, the, 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 the Premier's office can only direct those qu queries to the Department of Health. There are still patients out there who were sent home who have requested to, you know, to be um, reinstated into the facilities and they're struggling. They can't. Mr. Masebe? Okay, let me just go back to the issue of the numbers again. As I said, Justice Museneke ordered us to pay 134. Of course, he did say that there's a total of 1,700 plus uh, affected uh, mental health care users, uh, which we agree with. But at the arbitration hearings, the list that he came with was 134, and that was fully complied with. Now, we are now dealing with the rest of the people who were not part of the arbitration process. As government, we have accepted that uh, as long as they are part of that whole list, we will uh, process their claims, of course, subject to verification. Now, obviously, coming back to the issue of to the other areas, of course, as the office of the Premier, the Premier remains totally committed to work with the families to ensure that uh, we attend to all the issues that were raised both in um, Professor Mahoba's report and uh, in the award uh, of uh, Justice Museneke, which he gave uh, in March last year after the arbitration process. So. We remain committed, led by the Premier, to work with the families and attend to every one of the things that were raised there. So which Obviously, ones have you attended to, apart from the payment to the 134 claimants? No, I do accept uh, what uh, Christine is saying about the pays. Uh, we also would have loved to see things moving much faster than uh, they are now. On the issue of the monument, for instance, we are working. There's a team that has been set up, um, incidentally, led by, jointly led by myself and Christine. Uh, but we have to work with other people who are involved in this. So we currently have a broad agreement o on what kind of a monument we need to build. Uh, a monument that would be a living monument, uh, but it's taking a little bit longer than uh, what uh, both of us would have loved. But, but we remain again. committed to, to, to work on those uh, issues. Uh, we will not uh, uh, pull back. We'll continue. Um, and when there are problems, we have to escalate to both the Premier and the Minister of Health. I know. You, I think you know the saying about uh, you know roads to certain destinations being paved with good intentions. Mm -hmm. But as Christine says, um, you know, apart from paying out those 134 claimants, you talk about yes. a work in progress around the monument. But which of the other issues has the Department of Health in Gauteng actually followed up upon? 
the recovery plan the department has to uh, has done the recovery plan but the plan is not just the plan it must talk to the kind of care that we give to the mental health care users so it's something that we are working together what with are the, the time frames though because remember we have an election coming up we might see a change in administration so what are the plans around making sure that the implementation actually takes place no we have to implement we've started when? implementing now there are things that we can do immediately there are things that require a policy shift and those would have to be dealt with at a political level uh, uh, from the national department but uh, all these things are now being attended to. Of course, Christina said the pace, and I agree with her. We need to move uh, a little bit faster. Uh, but we, are, we remain absolutely committed to improving the quality of uh, care that uh, we give to the mental health care users. So Chris, can I something? Yes, please. There? Um, you know, with all due respect, things have gone too to being normal. You know, the, one of the issues that was raised at the arbitration was that the very people who were found guilty in the process, you attend meetings and they're still there, you know, and you don't get the sense that nothing has been done. The change in attitude is not there. We would have thought that this life of city mental tragedy would have shaken people up and, and would have gotten them to move at a pace and do things differently. We are, it's almost as if life is many has not happened. Besides the claimant process, which is what we've been focusing a lot of our attention on, the rest of the stuff is back to normal. And that, is, that is very frustrating, you know, with, with, when you go to a meeting or you go to a, um, October, the, the, the mental health um, month conference, you see the very people that you complained about and there's still no change. Mr. Masebe, is there an update on uh, the disciplinary processes and outcomes thereof? Let, let me say, so disciplinary processes deal with one aspect of these things. It deals with the labor relations issues. It cannot be enough to address systemic problems. We've got to deal with all of this through one, the recovery plan, which includes, uh, and then secondly, a uh, shift in policy. Uh, and then we have to look at uh, the uh, support structures within the department to say, do we have the structures that are properly geared to give the kind of service that we want to give? But, but so, are, are you not complicating a very uncomplicated question, which is simply mm -hmm. there were people who were fingered as per the uh, Life SED Many reports. Uh, several uh, outcomes have been established. So what has been done to hold those people accountable for their wrongdoing in this tragedy? That's the simple question. The former head of department has now moved. The moved former director of uh, mental health has but also left. But moved to where, Mr. Masebe? No, they, they left the department. They left government. So, so what does that mean in terms of no, accountability? They, the head of department resigned. We now have a new head of department who has been appointed But where's uh, the accountability? Year. Should they not be held accountable for their actions that led to the deaths of no, the people that, who this arbitration process was about. Yeah, that's why I say let's deal with these things. So there's the labor relations aspect. That is dealt with at the time when these people resigned. Then there, is, there are other issues. The issues of accountability, for instance. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the recommendations uh, made by Professor Makhova is that uh, all these people who belong to professional bodies must be reported to their uh, respective uh, uh, institutions. That has been done. Uh, so those institutions themselves Is have to run. No, have to run processes. Then within the department, what we have to do, as I'm saying to you, is to look at the systems, look at the structures, and say, are these structures? But that's. I'm sorry, but he keeps on... You see, we're not talking about the top three. We know that they have to be dealt with by, by the NPA. 
we're talking about the staff that was in there initially when these plans mm -hmm. were put together. Those are the people that we want to, ha to have held accountable because we were told in the arbitration that they were suspended or they were... And the, uh, what um, Judge Moseneke said, that's a slap. You, you're playing with people's lives. These people were supposed to be um, dealt with severely. There's still a lot of people whose names were never mentioned. The families keep on asking, what about this person? Because they're still in the positions that they were in before this well, arbitration happened. I'm loath to end it there, but thank you so much to uh, both uh, Christine Gumala and Mr. Tabo Masebe uh, for coming through, speaking to us about the latest in uh, the Life Isi Dimeni uh, story. And uh, Mr. Tabo Masebe, of course, is a spokesperson for the Department of Health and Gauteng, and Christine Gumala uh, represents uh, the families of the Life Isi Dimeni tragedy. And with that, we're going to go to a break.